Hello. In the next series of videos, we're going to be talking about active filters. The objectives for this uh, set of videos is first we want to understand what filters are in electronic circuits and what are their general characteristics. Uh, we also want to understand the different possible classifications that there are of filters. Uh, that is to say, what's an analog filter versus a digital filter. Uh, what's the difference between a passive versus an active filter, um, bandpass versus high pass versus low pass filter, and so forth. Uh, another possible classification um, is by the type of transfer function of the filter. And based on transfer function, the filters can be characterized as Butterworth filters, Chebyshev filters, Bessel, elliptical, and, and a myriad of others. So we're going to try to understand the difference between the performance uh, of at least the three most common, I would say, types of filters used that are the Butterworth, Chebyshev, and Bessel transfer functions. Um, and then we are going to move on to filter design. Now, designing filters of um, low order is fairly simple, but as the order of the filter gets higher, uh, the design process becomes more cumbersome, and so um, techniques have been developed and methodologies have been developed um, that are standard and they're step-by-step -step methodologies that try to uh, simplify the process of designing high-order filters. And uh, those methods use typically the concepts of frequency scaling and magnitude scaling. So we're going to be um, studying what those mean and how to apply them in the practice. And uh, we're going to uh, apply to the design or apply those concepts to the design of a particular type of filter, which is going to be the Butterworth filter. But they can be extended to the design of other types of filters as well. And then finally, we're going to learn about the state variable filter and how to design a basic state variable filter to achieve a particular filter response, whether it be a low pass, high pass, or band pass filter. So first of all, what are filters? In electronic circuits. Um, and a filter is a circuit that's going to produce a particular frequency response. Uh, typically, it's going to take in an input signal and it's going to either uh, let through certain frequencies and uh, remove others or amplify certain frequencies and attenuate others. As filters are a very important application in analog circuits. And there's a lot of research that has been done in the area of filter theory design and implementation. The reason why they are so important is because they're used in many different applications. Uh, for example, uh, any radio application is going to involve several filters, um, modulation and demodulation um, processes. Those include filters. Uh, when we talk about signal conversion, um, analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters, uh, image processing and signal processing circuits, uh, all of those are going to use filters in some shape or form. So let's take a look at the different types of filters that there are, uh, because when faced with a particular application that is going to need a filter, uh, one of the first questions that we're going to be asking is, what type of filter do I need to use for this application, or what type of filter is best for this application? So uh, one possible classification is to classify filters as analog versus digital. Analog filters, as the name indicates, are, are circuits that process analog signals, which are continuous time signals. Whereas digital filters operate on digital signals, which are signals that have been sampled um, and that have been digitized, converted into a digital form, comprised of a sequence of um, high and lower ones and zeros. Um, a digital filter is more complex in nature than an analog filter because it typically uh, since the signals in the real world are analog signals, uh, for them to be processed digitally, you first will have to digitize them. So a digital filter system usually will include an analog to digital converter so that they can sample and digitize the input signal, a microprocessor, microprocessor and peripheral components uh, so that you can store your data, your filter coefficients, and then perform the filtering operation. And then a digital to analog converter to bring the filter signal back into the analog domain. Um, analog filters process analog signals directly, meaning you don't have to, um, to include a data converter, neither at the input nor at the output, and typically they're going to be simpler than just um, a microprocessor. 
They're also typically faster since they avoid certain steps like sampling, DSP, and reconstruction. Now, um, digital filters, as mentioned, tend to be more expensive just because they require more hardware and, and in some cases complex hardware than their analog counterparts. Um, but digital filters make many designs practical that will be impractical in analog filters and also in a lot of modern applications we're already using a microprocessor and we are uh, already performing the steps of digitizing the signal and then uh, transforming it back into the analog form. So if, if we encounter with a system which already includes a microprocessor and, and those peripherals and already is uh, doing some type of digital signal processing on the signal, then adding a filtering operation obviously is going to be simpler and not any more expensive as a digital filter than having to add uh, more analog devices and, and process analog filters. So depending on the application and whether you already have the hardware for some other operations or you have to add the hardware specifically for the filtering operation, digital filters may be more expensive than analog or maybe less expensive than analog. Now, another possible classification of filters is passive filters versus active filters. Um, and obviously this is a classification for analog filters. Um, analog filters that are considered passive filters, they use only passive components, meaning resistors, inductors, and capacitors. They're typically simpler than their active counterparts, and they use less power than active filters. But they have also their disadvantages, um, meaning they cannot provide any gain greater than one, for example, and also sometimes they experience loading, loading issues because they don't have any buffering stage. Active filters are filters that use at least one active element, and in addition, they may use a variety of passive elements. They have some advantages in that they allow for gains that are greater than one. They typically provide some buffering, so they avoid loading effects that are um, one of the disadvantages of the passive filters. And uh, in general, uh, they allow for easy design, especially in the case of higher order filters, um, it's easier to design them using active components than just passive components. Uh, they also have their disadvantages. For one thing, they consume more power because of the active components. Active components are nonlinear devices, even though we uh, assume that they are linear and we operate them in the linear region, they are in essence nonlinear devices and they are going to introduce nonlinearities in our overall circuit. Active components also have internal capacitances and therefore they have bandwidth limitations that get translated into a bandwidth limitation for our filter as well. So those are some of the advantages and disadvantages uh, of each of the filter. Obviously, both of them are useful and both of them are used. Uh, passive filters typically abound uh, in applications that require first order or even sometimes second order filters. Um, active filters are, are more common in higher order filter applications. Uh, finally, another possible classification of filters is depending on their passband, uh, whether they are designed to, to allow uh, signals through that are of lower frequencies, higher frequencies, or a range of frequencies. And so they um, can be classified as low pass filters, where as we can see in the first image, they are going to let through signals of frequencies lower than a certain uh, cutoff frequency, and then they're going to reject or attenuate signals of higher frequencies. High pass filters, just the opposite, they're going to reject signals uh, of frequencies lower than the cutoff frequency, and they are going to let through signals of frequencies that are higher than the cutoff frequency. A band pass filter is going to um, allow through signals that are within a specified frequency range, known as the passband, and the uh, notch or band reject or stop band filters are going to be filters that are going to reject or attenuate uh, signals within a certain range. They will let everything else through, but they are typically designed to eliminate a particular frequency or range of frequencies from our signal. Um, these are uh, ideal filter responses, as we can see. They have a perfect uh, sharp edge that divides the passband from the stop band. Um, 
and uh, the frequency that divides, that, that creates that division is known as the cutoff frequency. Um, real filters are never going to have these perfect shapes. They are not going to have these sharp edges, uh, but rather there's going to be a certain transition from the passband to the stop band, and uh, based on, on the generic shape of a real filter, we can differentiate different regions. We're going to be talking about um, the performance of filters and how to measure the performance of filters based on different characteristics. And there are three things that we're going to be looking at. Uh, well, at higher level, two things, the frequency response of the filter and the time response of the filter. And within those two, we're going to be looking at, uh, within the frequency response, we can consider the amplitude response of the filter and the phase response of the filter. And then within the time uh, time response of a filter, we're going to consider both the impulse response and the step response. And uh, from, from those different types of responses, we're going to derive some characteristics and we're going to be able to compare performance of different types of filters. And as we shall see, it's very difficult to find a filter that is going to uh, perform the best in all possible characteristics. Typically, there are going to be trade-offs. And so, for example, filters that perform better, that have a better frequency response, may not necessarily have the base time response, uh, etc. We will see uh, what we mean by all that in the next video. Thank you.